24 hours later, we arrived at that symbolic bridge between Europe and Asia, Istanbul, the ancient Constantinople. Its fretted skyline of mosques obscures the historical fact that this was a Greek settlement to start with. This was Byzantium, later Constantinople, today Istanbul, founded 26 centuries ago. Greek colony, outpost of the Roman Empire, capital of the Eastern Empire, Hellenic, then Roman, then Byzantine, but always Greek at heart, until 1453, when Islam finally triumphed. Istanbul is one of the great hinges of history. Constantinople lasted for more than a thousand years. His heart was broken not by the Turks, who are commonly accused of the crime, but by the rascally Venetian crusaders, who in the name of Christianity plundered the city 250 years before the Turk. We saw some of their loot in Venice at the beginning of the cruise. In many ways, the Turks picked up the artistic traditions of Constantinople where the Greeks had dropped them and incidentally practice a tolerance that deserves our gratitude. The center, often the trouble center, of Constantinople in its great days was the Hippodrome, where chariot races and politics were equally at home. Some of its monuments stand like petrified ghosts in the modern square, an obelisk from ancient Egypt, brought here by the Romans and set up on a carved pedestal, showing the emperor and his court. And next to it, the famous twisted bronze column brought by Constantine from Delphi in Greece, the oldest Greek monument in Istanbul. But infinitely the greatest of the Byzantine remains is Santa Sophia, that mighty church built by the Emperor Justinian in the sixth century. In the mechanics of architecture, this is one of the outstanding buildings of the world. Indeed, the whole span of Greek architecture is contained between Santa Sophia at one end and the Parthenon of Athens at the other, a thousand years. Athens marks the highest attainment of purely static and restful architecture. But here at Santa Sophia, we're in the presence of a perennial battle in brick and stone, dome fighting dome, and stability secured by the balanced opposition of forces, uh, much as in a, a Gothic cathedral. In this great church, the last of the Byzantine emperors, the 12th Constantine, received the Eucharist for the last time on the 28th of April, 1453. The following morning, the besieging Turks at last breached the splendid walls of the city. And as the Turkish Chicharone has it, with the war cries from a thousand breasts, mingled the death rattle of the countless wounded. The emperor himself died sword in hand. 10,000 refugees packed into Santa Sofia, where a few hours previously the priests, it is said, had been furiously debating the sex of angels. The Turks broke in, and there was such slaughter that when Mohammed the Conqueror rode into the church, his horse-trod bodies piled 10 feet deep. High up on one of the pillars is proof in the shape of a human hand. It is the imprint of the hand of the conqueror who struck the pillar and bade all bloodshed cease. Thereafter, the high altar gave place to a prayer niche facing Mecca. The greatest church in Christendom had become a mosque. Istanbul, 
is busily turning its back on history. New highways instead of twisted medieval streets. Instead of picturesque slums, new concrete houses. A little of the trimness of a Greco-Roman town is retained, though with much loss to the artist and the antiquary.